Renault was the first brand to properly meet the needs of mid-sized MPV buyers wanting seven seats. This third generation Grand Scenic model continues to effectively do just that, but this time round does so with a much more sophisticated feel. There's styling that borrows from the crossover sector, along with a classier cabin that's filled with plenty of technology in most models. With engines borrowed from the Megane range, it stacks up on the balance sheet too. In short, it ticks a lot of boxes. You wouldn't normally approach a drive in an MPV with much enthusiasm, but with its big 20-inch wheels and its purposeful demeanour, this rejuvenated Grand Scenic promises to be a bit different. In reality, there's nothing particularly enjoyable on offer here, but body roll through the bends is pretty well controlled, and it's aided by the stiff, sophisticated new CMF platform that this Renault now rides on. And the electrically assisted steering is precise and direct, even if it doesn't offer up a great deal of feel. As for the ride, well, yes, that is quite firm, but it's no more so than it would be in a rival Ford Grand C-Max or Volkswagen Turan, and they roll on much smaller rims. Now, that is an impressive achievement that Renault says has been made possible by the adoption of special 107mm high-profile tyre sidewalls. They're exactly the same as those you'd use on 17-inch uh, rims. The engines on offer have largely been carried over from the previous generation model. Uh, most buzz will choose the entry-level 1.5-litre DCI 110 bhp diesel, which is offered with either manual or DDC automatic transmission. As an option, this power plant can be ordered in hybrid assist form, in which guys the DCI units assisted by a 48-volt battery that's topped up by energy recovery under deceleration and braking. Now that can lead to efficiency improvements of up to 10%, although even in standard spec, the 1.5 litre diesel is quite frugal, capable of 70.6 mpg on the combined cycle and 104 grams per kilometre of CO2. You won't get anything like that, though, if you opt for either of the 1.6 litre DCI diesels. Uh, there's a single turbo 130 bhp unit that we're trying here, or a twin turbo 160 bhp auto only model. As for petrol power, uh, well, the choice is between 115 and 130 bhp versions of Renault's familiar four cylinder 1.2 litre TCE unit. You'd expect the brand that invented the usably shaped mid-sized seven-seat MPV to define the way it should look. Is that what Renault's done here? Well, many will think so. Uh, Laurent van den Acker and his stylists have attempted what is, in their words, a more modern and sexier take on a compact people carrier of this kind, basing this model on the R-Space concept car that appeared back in 2011. Now, this rejuvenated Grand Scenic doesn't have the innovative backward-opening rear doors of that design, but it does share the same curving silhouette and set off by huge uh, standard 20-inch wheels that are intended to make the roofline look lower. They do, and it isn't. In fact, this car sits 40 mils higher off the ground than its predecessor as part of Renault's attempt to imbue trendy crossover cues into this design. But that only goes so far. Uh, the heavily right windscreen still visually positions this car very much as a people carrier and quite a large one by mid-sized MPV standards. Uh, the 4.63 metre total length makes this model not only 228 mils longer than its five-seat scenic stablemate, but also notably lengthier than all its most direct rivals. Time to take a seat behind the wheel get comfortable, have a look around. Uh, what are you going to notice? <laughs> well, the answer is obvious in the top grand scene, like the one we're trying here. This 8.7-inch portrait-style centre-dash um, R-Link 2 touchscreen, there to bring a little touch of Tesla to this humble family MPV. And here in the second row, you'll start to appreciate some of the benefits of buying a seven-seat MPV rather than the sort of seven-seat crossover model you might have had for similar money. Now, that kind of car would give you the same sort of basic rear bench you'd get on any conventional family hatchback, uh, which would perch the unfortunate middle rear passenger on some hard and narrow piece of bulging foam with legs astride a central transmission tunnel. Now, here, in contrast, you get a far more comfortable arrangement, a proper space for three adults, decent headroom, even with this optional panoramic glass roof fitted, and the opportunity to stretch your legs that's aided by the body length increase we referenced earlier. So, how will it be if you've been banished to the very back? 
well, the middle row of seats moves forward in one swift movement. Uh, uh, but getting into the third row still does require a certain level of agility that might tax Grandma on your Sunday outing with her and the kids to the local garden centre. And once you are in here, it's very clear that the space provided is intended for children rather than adults. Although folk above school age could quite happily be accommodated if they weren't overly tall, uh, the journey wasn't too long and the middle bench ahead was pushed forward a little. So time to check out the boot. Now, uh, there's a 233 litre space provided with all three seating rows in place, which is pretty good by class standards. Now, if you flatten the rearmost seats, Using this one-touch electric folding mechanism, uh, then a 596-litre luggage area is revealed. Now, that is a little more than the previous generation model could offer, but with that car, you did have the option of three individual middle-row chairs that could be folded, uh, tumbled forward, or even taken out completely. Now, with this Mark III Grand Scenic, there's none of that, just a conventional bench which folds forward. Uh, to free up 1,737 litres of carriage capacity. Renault's Grand Scenic is here to remind us that there's still a place for the traditional seven-seat mid-sized MPV in a modern market that's filling up with other higher-profile alternatives. It's practical, spacious, efficient and decently equipped, as every car of this kind has to be. But in this case, each of these criteria has been ticked off with a thoroughness that reminds you just who perfected this market sector in the first place. In short, this model line has got a lot of life in it yet. <laughs>